Do you ever find yourself pondering why thoughts of a particular person persistently occupy your heart and mind each day? This could be a friend or a loved one navigating through a challenging season, or it might be someone unfamiliar to you. Regardless, you simply cannot shake off these recurring thoughts. They linger, disrupting your daily life. Could it be that these persistent thoughts are God's way of directing your attention towards that person? In today's video, we aim to explore the significance of constantly thinking about someone and what it might signify in the context of God's guidance. We encourage you to pay close attention as we delve into this topic, as it could profoundly impact your relationships and journey towards marriage. We kindly ask you to take a moment to subscribe to our channel, appreciate this video by liking it, and share it at least once to help us reach more individuals and be a source of blessings to others. In Proverbs 3, 5-6, it's written, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. These thoughts about someone, they don't just appear out of nowhere. They're not mere products of your imagination. Various factors contribute to their presence. However, we can find reassurance in the fact that there is a purpose behind them. And the first step is understanding their source. Regardless of where these thoughts originate, there's always a deeper meaning. By the end of this discussion, we'll gain insight into how God communicates through these thoughts and what actions He may be guiding us to take. Now, let's explore some reasons why persistent thoughts of someone may be occupying our hearts. One possible reason is that God may be prompting you to reach out or to pray for that person. Typically, fleeting thoughts of others can easily be dismissed, but when they persist, it could indicate that God is trying to convey a message to you. James 5.16 encourages us to confess our sins to one another and pray for each other, emphasizing the powerful and effective nature of the prayers of the righteous. Your prayer at that moment could hold significant meaning for the person you're thinking of. The Bible teaches that the earnest prayers of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. In 1 Timothy 2, we're urged to offer prayers and intercessions for all people, including those in positions of authority. So if someone keeps reoccurring in your thoughts, it may be a divine nudge to lift them up in prayer, seeking guidance, protection, or strength for their lives. When you pray for someone enduring tough times, you're asking God to provide guidance and protection for them. This person may even be a stranger, completely unfamiliar to you. But by prompting these thoughts, God's calling you to intercede on their behalf. God places these thoughts in your mind so that you may lift them up in prayer or even to reach out to them, regardless of any distance or barriers. By doing so, you're demonstrating obedience, compassion, and love, aligning with the desires of our Heavenly Father. In Matthew 22, Jesus teaches us to love our neighbor as ourselves. When someone occupies your thoughts consistently, it could be a sign that your heart's being filled with love and compassion for them. Hence, God is prompting you to pray for their well-being, display kindness, or extend a helping hand if they're in need. While it may be challenging initially, there are rewards in following God's will. Through these actions as a child of God, you foster meaningful relationships with others. And again, there's no need to fear. If God has placed someone in your heart, simply trust in Him. He'll protect you no matter what. Don't forget that you're not really doing it for them, but for the Lord Himself, as the Bible says in Matthew 25:40. The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whenever you assist someone, placed in your heart by God, you're demonstrating your loyalty to God as your Father. Don't feel overwhelmed by persistent thoughts of someone in your spirit. Remember that if these thoughts endure, God may be trying to communicate with you. 
your intercession and acts of generosity can alleviate any challenges or troubles they may be facing at that moment. The second reason why God continually places someone in your heart is that they may be the one He has destined for you. God desires for us to be happy and have a fulfilling marriage. This is echoed in the scripture in Proverbs 18.22. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. The persistent thoughts are one of God's ways of directing you to the right person. To discern if that person might be the right one for you, you must seek God's guidance through prayer, seek His confirmation, observe if the person shares your values, and rely on your relationship with God to lead you to the one meant for you. Sometimes, when you find yourself constantly thinking about someone, it may be a sign from God urging you to forgive and let go. Forgiveness is a compassionate act that brings peace to our hearts and those around us. In Matthew 5, 23-24, it's written, Therefore, if you're offering a gift at the altar, and there remember your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. In these verses, Jesus instructs us to reconcile with others before presenting our offerings to God. If persistent thoughts of someone reflect unresolved conflicts or strained relationships, it could be God prompting us to seek forgiveness, extend forgiveness, or take steps toward reconciliation. At times, we may have unresolved issues with someone, and thoughts about them linger in our hearts and minds. When these thoughts persist, it may be God's way of encouraging you to release them and forgive. The thing about forgiveness is that when you practice it, you're also benefiting, not just the person you forgave. The Bible states in Colossians 3.13, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Jesus himself told us that unless we forgive those who offend us, our Heavenly Father will not forgive us our own sins. These scriptures emphasize the importance of forgiveness as commanded by God. While forgiveness may not come easily, as a child of God, it's vital for your own healing. So, my dear friend, when you find yourself constantly thinking of someone, recognize that God may be trying to communicate with you, either to pray for them or to forgive them. It can be challenging, but remember that God's always with you to guide you through it all. Another reason why God continuously brings thoughts of others to your mind may be that He wants to nurture a relationship with them and the person involved might be part of His plan for you. It's not unusual for God to place people in our hearts for a purpose. Our Heavenly Father pays attention to and is involved in our daily lives. His presence aids in our spiritual growth and provides guidance. This is why the book of Proverbs urges us to trust in the Lord and seek His guidance in all our ways. When you find yourself constantly thinking about someone, it could be God's way of indicating a task, message, or growth opportunity within that relationship. It might be a nudge to seek His wisdom and discern His purpose in that connection. As you grow closer to this person, you might find it difficult to resist thoughts of them. Remember, this is all orchestrated by God, who operates according to His divine standards. God delights in seeing two people He's ordained come together and experience a fulfilling marriage. The first man, Adam, would not have fulfilled his purpose without his union with Eve. This demonstrates God's intention for divine connections and relationships. When you sense God leading you toward someone, remember He has a unique purpose and plan for every relationship. Trust in His plan and remain open to His guidance. Even if you don't fully comprehend the reason behind the constant thoughts, remember that if they're from God, there's a purpose behind them, and that purpose includes a beautiful and promising future. My dear brother, my dear sister, God desires for you to build a fulfilling home with someone special, a home that reflects the love of Jesus and His mission on earth. The recurring thoughts of this person may indicate that God has appointed them to bring you comfort, 
and support your journey and destiny in life. Therefore, when someone occupies your thoughts persistently, it's essential to pray for wisdom and discernment to comprehend God's intentions and purposes in that situation. God's guidance may manifest through scripture, prayer, seeking counsel from wise believers, or through personal revelation in your heart. Stay attuned to the guidance and prompting of the Holy Spirit and trust in God's loving guidance as you navigate this relationship and respond to the thoughts that captivate your mind. You might be grappling with intense feelings for someone and these emotions have grown stronger than you'd like. Why is this happening? You find it uncomfortable because you're not in a relationship with them despite your strong feelings. It can feel like a waste of time and you might wish that God would simply remove these overwhelming emotions. Today, we'll delve into this crucial topic while you place your trust in God to guide you, helping you understand the mental, physical, and spiritual state He desires for you. First and foremost, it's important to recognize that the feelings you're experiencing are entirely natural, especially when they're genuine and directed towards someone you genuinely connect with. However, there's a fundamental truth. Not every person you have feelings for is someone you'll marry. Relying solely on your feelings can lead to complications when it comes to choosing the right life partner. God's intention for you is to learn how to manage your desires instead of being controlled by them ensuring they don't dictate our actions. Let's explore this topic from two angles. One, God might not be taking away your feelings for someone because He intends for you to be with them. And two, He might retain those feelings even if He doesn't plan for you to be together. By considering these perspectives, you'll gain a deeper understanding of your feelings for this person. This approach allows God to guide you spiritually preventing you from getting stuck in challenging situations. Now, let's delve into some significant reasons why God doesn't remove your feelings for someone, even when you're aware that a future together might not be possible. Firstly, God wants to sustain Himself in your life. You might believe that one day you'll marry the person you deeply care for, even if you're not in a relationship with them right now. Did you know that God can hold that special person for you while He establishes Himself in your heart, ensuring your love for Him remains strong? Proverbs 3, 5-6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. Even if it seems like God isn't taking away your desires for a particular person or situation, we can trust that He has an even better plan for our lives than we can imagine. The Bible reminds us in Matthew 22, 37 to 38, that Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. This is the greatest commandment. This tells us that no matter what, God wants you to keep Him as your top priority in your heart. While the second commandment says you should love your neighbor as yourself, the first one emphasizes delighting in Him. So even if you have feelings for someone, God intends for you to find joy in Him above all else. Sometimes, God allows us to experience challenging situations so that we can rely on His strength and grow closer to Him. God desires us to discover our fulfillment in Him. When we do that, everything else falls into place. Psalm 37.4 tells us to delight in the Lord and He will grant the desires of our hearts. This doesn't mean that He'll give us everything we want, but it does mean He'll provide what's best for us. Secondly, God, in allowing these feelings, aims to help you develop discernment and the ability to distinguish between genuine feelings and mere infatuation. You may wonder why God doesn't take away your feelings for someone especially when you're not planning to marry that person? It's a valid question, and it's often relevant for Christians who are in a relationship with non-believers. The reason behind this might be that God wants you to realize that this person, although dear to your heart, may not align with God's purpose for your life. Being attached to someone whose values differ from yours can distract you from God's intended path. 
God may allow these feelings to persist so that you learn the consequences of prioritizing emotions over His guidance. The Apostle Paul conveyed a similar message in 1 Corinthians 6.12 when he said, I have the right to do anything, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. He highlighted the importance of discerning the consequences of our choices. The Bible in Romans 8, 4-5 tells us that living according to the flesh leads to desires influenced by the flesh. But those who live by the Spirit are directed by spiritual desires. This emphasizes that believers should not be led solely by their fleshly desires, but by God's guidance to avoid future regrets. Many people make poor choices because they struggle to differentiate between emotions and true love. To succeed in this aspect, you must surrender yourself to God and allow Him to teach you how to manage your feelings more effectively. Thirdly, have you ever considered that if God takes away those feelings, you might miss out on crucial aspects of your life that need your attention? Sometimes people face challenges in relationships, whether from the past or in the present. The expectations tied to these experiences can lead to anxiety or fear, which may negatively impact not only their lives, but also their future spouse's life. It's worth noting that our determination often stems from the feelings we hold. For example, having strong feelings for someone might not reveal that you could become an insecure, jealous, or overly possessive partner until you settle down with them. Without this awareness, you might miss God's guidance, continuously moving from one relationship to another, carrying unresolved battles that could harm both your life and the lives of others. God retains these feelings, highlighting them for your understanding. He wants you to acknowledge them and surrender them to Him, allowing Him to completely heal these internal struggles. God sees a side of you that He intends to deal with, benefiting not only your life, but also the life of your future spouse. Many people approach marriage with unrealistic expectations, believing it's a fairy tale experience. However, God knows your heart and desires the best for you. He preserves those feelings within you until His healing and transformation process is complete. Your feelings for someone can be like a radiant light, illuminating your innermost heart, casting its glow on everything around you. But here's the interesting part. God doesn't quite see it that way. Why? Because He peers into our hearts and comprehends what's truly best for us. He planted those emotions within you not to complete your life with someone else, but to serve as a signpost, guiding you to the areas you still need to address. It's His way of redirecting your focus towards your life's purpose. Nothing, not even marriage, can provide genuine fulfillment unless it aligns with God's Word and purpose. Don't misunderstand me, marriage is indeed a beautiful thing. However, when you live according to God's purpose and surrender all to Him, He will heal you, guide you, and help you gain mastery over these emotions for someone. With His guidance, you'll find harmony and perfection in your marital relationship. Number four, another compelling reason why God might not be removing your desire for someone is that it might not be the right time. As the Bible wisely tells us in Ecclesiastes 3, 1, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Sometimes we're eager for things to unfold on our schedule, but God has a different timetable. He understands when the perfect moment arrives. Just because something isn't happening right now doesn't mean it won't happen. We must place our trust in God's timing, knowing that He will act when the time is right. Building a relationship with God doesn't steal your joy. It enhances it, and it won't lead you astray. Building a relationship with God will guide you towards a more fulfilling life. It's crucial to remember that God's ways aren't always our ways, and His thoughts are beyond our thoughts. While we may not grasp why God permits us to harbor certain emotions, we can be confident that He has a purpose for our lives and everything ultimately works for our benefit. Patience is key. If you've sensed that a particular person isn't the right match for you, yet your feelings linger, make an effort to redirect your thoughts away from them. 
minimize your interactions, and embark on building healthy connections with others. As time goes by, your emotions will evolve. This is precisely why safeguarding your heart is so vital. As Proverbs 4, 23 wisely advises, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. In Song of Solomon 8.4, it echoes, Daughters of Jerusalem, I charge you, do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Letting your emotions run amok for someone can be a lengthy process to rectify if the relationship never advances as expected. Remember, God is our loving Heavenly Father. Even when it seems like He's withholding something from us, we must maintain our faith that His plan always surpasses ours. If you genuinely care for someone you can't currently be with, it's natural to pray, Lord, if being with this person isn't your will, please help me let go of these feelings. Trust in God and follow His will for your life. May God bless you on your journey to marital settlement in Jesus' name. If you found this video uplifting, kindly give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Your support enables us to expand our reach and share the message of Jesus Christ. We're here to support you through prayer. Please share your prayer requests in the comments. We'd love to pray with you and join you in faith. Even if you don't receive an immediate reply, rest assured that we're lifting you up in prayer, believing in God's power to touch your life, no matter where you are, and work miracles. Exploring the depths of love is truly a lifelong journey. It's like embarking on a beautiful adventure, isn't it? We're constantly uncovering the mysteries that reside within our hearts, and it's an amazing experience because it's constantly changing us into better people who will bring peace to our partners. And so, God lets us walk this path of discovery so that we can ultimately find fulfillment in our future with the one He has chosen for us. Today, let's delve into the way God unveils the person He is destined for you. It's a topic that's both fascinating and significant in our marital journey. This topic is quite interesting because it deals with the stressful side of things God might use in guiding you to the One. My hope is that through this discussion, you will find illumination and clarity regarding God's will for your life. First and foremost, have you ever found yourself feeling adrift in life? Perhaps there have been months where you felt lost, uncertain of which direction to turn in your relationship. At these times, it's crucial to recognize that they present an opportunity for you to stand firm alongside God and deepen your relationship with Him. It's during these moments of uncertainty that God reveals the presence of hope and the promise of love. Often we find ourselves wishing that God would simply point out the right person for us and we could then embark on the journey together. However, God may bring the person into your life and keep them at a distance, according to what He deems best for you. He may first lead you to a place where you feel out of sorts, bewildered and lost, so that you can ultimately find your way to Him and discover satisfaction and completeness. It's in this season that He will reveal the right person to you. The Holy Spirit plays a vital role in guiding your thoughts and emotions during these times of confusion. It's through His divine presence that God calls you to draw nearer to Him, to give Him your complete attention, and to allow Him to be your unwavering companion on the journey of self-discovery. God wants you to understand that even in these moments of tranquility, you can still discover love and affection. You don't have to fear or worry. When God is first, the things you need will fall into place. Secondly, it's natural to experience a period of waiting, whether it's for someone or something you're anticipating. However, when it comes to waiting on God, it's important to embrace it as a season of receiving divine guidance for the next phase of life. The guidance of the Holy Spirit aims to prepare you for the person He has destined for you, someone who will love and cherish you, enriching your life, another aspect to embrace during this waiting period is that it can be a season of divine healing. When facing challenges in a relationship, it may be a sign that God doesn't want you to proceed with that relationship. God keeps you waiting so that He can heal, shape, and refine you into a better person, ready for someone special. Our God is perfect, and He sees the end from the beginning. Your season of waiting is a time when He leads you 
to the person he has chosen for you. The remarkable thing about God is that he acts at the perfect time. His timing is extraordinary and undoubtedly results in something beautiful. As Ecclesiastes 3.11 states, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. Nonetheless, the season of waiting can be challenging, as it may feel like things aren't progressing as expected. The purpose of this waiting is to strengthen your faith and trust in God, believing that He will guide you through this phase and lead you to the person He has in store for you. So don't give up yet. Trust the Lord and know that He is working in the background. This brings me to the third stressful thing God might use to reveal your partner, trusting Him for guidance. Trust is a crucial element when seeking God's guidance and direction. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 reminds us too, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him, and He will make your paths straight. Finding the right person for you can indeed be a challenging journey in life. Scripture emphasizes the importance of combining faith with action. It stresses that faith without action is futile. To navigate the process of finding a suitable partner, it's vital to seek God's guidance and rely on His wisdom. Just as Jesus trusted God to lead Him in His earthly ministry, we too can seek God's guidance for our search for a life partner. This can be accomplished through prayer, fasting, and immersing ourselves in God's Word. By strengthening our faith and seeking God's wisdom, we can discern His will for our lives and make choices that align with His plan. This involves cultivating a steadfast faith that endures trials and temptations. When we are rooted in God's teachings, we are less likely to stumble or enter into relationships that are not in line with His intentions for us. It's important to understand that seeking God's guidance does not guarantee an effortless journey. However, by seeking His guidance and surrendering ourselves to His will, we can have confidence that He will lead us to the right person, trusting in God's timing and remaining faithful in our pursuit is essential. So if finding the right person feels like a daunting mountain before you, I encourage you to wholeheartedly seek God. Dedicate time to prayer, listen for His voice, and follow His guidance in your decision-making process. Strengthen your faith through studying His Word and trust that He will lead you to choose the person compatible with His plans for your life. The fourth point is that when God reveals your partner, be prepared for the unexpected. You may have found someone you deeply love, but there will be moments of incompatibility, where your likes are their dislikes and vice versa. You might wonder if this relationship will lead to a fulfilling marriage, or if you should wait before committing. God wants both of you to confront these challenges and believe that you can overcome them with time. According to Philippians 4.13, I can do all this through Him who gives me strength. If God is bringing you together at the right place and time, He will make it possible for you. Trust that God is diligent and careful, and He will work things out for both of you. Instead of being afraid of what you see, believe that God will not let you down. In James 1, 6-8, it emphasized that when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Doubt leads to instability, and one should not expect to receive anything from the Lord if they are double-minded. This scripture encourages you to invite God into your relationship. If you see positive signs, understand that it is God who has orchestrated it and desires the two of you to be together. Trust that regardless of the current situation, there is always a way through with God. The fifth point is God will reveal true love to you by dispelling immature expectations. The truth is many of us have an idealized or fantasized image of the kind of person we think we deserve or want. However, your idealized image of a spouse may not align with God's plan for you. So God allows the removal of these fantasies to foster personal growth and maturity, not to separate you from your desires. Though this process may initially lead to findings of disappointment or brokenness, it serves a deeper purpose. By letting go of unrealistic expectations, you have the opportunity to develop a more realistic understanding of yourself and your relationships. Through this transformative experience, you will gain maturity and a clearer insight into the kind of love and partnership that God intends for you. It's crucial to embrace this process with patience and trusting God's plan. 
Despite feeling disappointed or broken, know that God is close to the brokenhearted, as stated in Psalm 34, 18. God allows certain things to be removed so that you can gain a deeper understanding of what love truly is and how he intends for you to love your spouse. This process aims to develop a sublime and enduring love, which cannot be easily dismissed or discarded. I encourage you to trust in God throughout this journey, knowing that everything He does serves a purpose that must be fulfilled because His divine plan is at work. By trusting in God's intentions and guidance, you can understand this process of understanding love and fulfilling your purpose in relationships. Just like we stated at the beginning of this video, Understanding the process of love is a unique journey. The challenges and difficulties you face in choosing the right partner will not only strengthen your faith, but also bring out the best in you. Before you can be with the person he has ordained for you, God will use this process of shaping you into the person who will explore and understand the true meaning of love. Although it may be challenging, the end result will lead to a beautiful future. It's important to acknowledge that none of us are perfect but we are all works in progress. In a relationship, it's not about showcasing your best self, but about being true to yourself to make the relationship work. In conclusion, God is available to those who patiently and diligently seek Him. His guidance is perfect and everlasting. By drawing closer to Him, everything will fall into place for you. Trust in His timing and guidance as you navigate the journey of love. At times, our minds drift towards certain individuals unexpectedly, sparking curiosity and wonder. Could this sudden thought be mere randomness? Or might it be a gentle nudge from above, guiding us towards a divine purpose? The intrigue of human connections often leads us down paths less traveled. Yet when a sudden thought about someone crosses our mind, we are left pondering its significance. The Bible elucidates the authority bestowed upon our minds, enabling choice in our thought processes. For instance, Colossians 3.2 urges us to set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on the earth. But what does it mean when a particular individual occupies our thoughts unbidden? Could it be a sacred message awaiting interpretation? Divine Messaging the essence of divine communication often lies in subtleties, hinting at a deeper connection between our thoughts and the spiritual realm. A sudden thought about someone might be more than a fleeting fancy. It could be a signal to take action, to reach out, or to pray for that individual. Romans 13, 14 advises, Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. This verse suggests a purposeful intention behind our thoughts, aligning them with a higher calling. Now, when a name or face abruptly emerges in your mind, pause and reflect. Could this be a prompt to foster a connection, offer support, or perhaps to explore a God-ordained relationship? The divine nudge may be urging you to act, embracing the opportunity to serve, love, or encourage. Remain open to the possibility that God is using your thoughts as a conduit for His purpose. Pray for discernment to understand the message and the courage to act accordingly. The intertwining of the spiritual and the mental unveils the potential for divine interactions amidst our daily lives. So when a sudden thought about someone knocks on the door of your mind, take a moment to ponder pray, and proceed with an open heart to God's guiding whisper. Our thoughts can indeed be mysterious, yet filled with divine potential. As you venture through the realms of sudden thoughts and divine nudges, may your heart find clarity, your actions reflect love, and your life be enriched by the meaningful connections forged along the way. Number two. Now on to our second insight. The divine tapestry is intricately woven with threads of thought, emotions, and heart stirrings. When a face or a name continually surfaces in the waves of our thoughts, 
it might not be mere coincidence. The good book enlightens us on the profound connection between the heart and the mind. It's like they're in a sacred dance, each step a thought, a reflection of the heart's rhythm. We find in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 19, the words of Jesus elucidating this bond. He said, For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. It's a profound cue to acknowledge the reverberations in our mind as they are echoes of our heart state. So when the image of someone continually graces the stage of your mind, it could be a whisper from the divine urging you to explore the emotion tied to the thought. It's an invitation not to shun the thought, but to delve deeper into its root. Ask yourself, what orchestration of the heart is playing out in the theater of the mind concerning this person? There could be a myriad of heart notes playing. Perhaps it's a call to extend love, forgiveness, or to forge a bond. Or it could be a divine nudge towards a companionship ordained by the heavens. The answers may unfold a beautiful narrative of love, friendship, or reconciliation waiting to blossom. We are on this journey of exploration together, and there's more to unveil. If you find resonance with these insights, do subscribe to join our vibrant community. Your engagement is a catalyst for a ripple of enlightenment that could touch many hearts. As we continue to unravel the divine mysteries enveloping our thoughts and relationships, remember, every thought could be a seed sown by the divine, waiting for the waters of awareness to foster growth. So let's continue to engage, explore, and evolve in this enthralling expedition of divine discovery. Number three, the unseen significance. When a face continually dances across your mind, it's easy to misinterpret this as a mere fancy. However, it might be a sign from the above, urging you to reflect. It's akin to a thirst that drives you towards water, or a hint of an ailment that nudges you towards rest. This magnetic pull towards someone could be a divine signal, urging you to address an inner quest. The Tricky Terrain of Idolization Venturing into the realms of affection often carries the risk of idolization, where the esteemed person starts occupying the throne of your heart that's divinely reserved. It's a subtle shift from adoration to idolization, where the person becomes the axis of your joy, shadowing the eternal joy derived from God. This shift not only barricades the divine joy, but also steers you towards a whirlpool of anxiety and discontent. Here's where discernment sails in as your compass. It's about distinguishing between a divine prompt and a mere emotional flutter. Reflect on whether continuous thought is a bridge to a deeper understanding or a barrier to your spiritual growth. Engage in a silent dialogue with God, seeking clarity in the maze of emotions entwining your heart, as echoed in Psalm 16:2. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord, Apart from you, I have no good thing. This verse unveils the essence deriving joy and fulfillment from God, who's the eternal fountain of goodness. It's about anchoring your joy in God, irrespective of the earthly relations that come your way. Number four, when someone suddenly pops into your mind, it may feel like a random occurrence, yet there could be a divine undertone to it. It's akin to a soft whisper amidst a cacophony. Easy to miss, yet profoundly meaningful. This could be a gentle reminder from above to reflect on your feelings or to take action. Maybe it's a time to reach out, to forgive, or to seek closure. As the face of that special someone flickers through your mind, it's a call for introspection. Are your thoughts veering towards idolization placing them on a pedestal high above. Our hearts are designed to seek joy, but the source of that joy should remain rooted in faith and not in mere mortals. As Psalm 28, seven mentions, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him 
and he helps me. It's essential to ensure that the sudden thoughts are not veering you away from your faith. If the sudden thoughts bring a warm smile, maybe it's God's way of telling you to rekindle a friendship or to take the plunge into deeper waters of relationship. However, if it brings a pang of unease, perhaps it's a call to find closure or strengthen your boundaries. It's all about interpreting these divine nudges and aligning them with God's Word. It's enchanting to dream about shared laughter and comforting silences with someone special. Amidst the whirlpool of emotions, ensuring God remains at the helm of your heart is pivotal. It's about nurturing a relationship under God's light, which will only then blossom into something truly beautiful and everlasting. Number five, God will allow you to keep thinking about this person as a sign you need to pursue a relationship with him or her. A sudden recollection or newfound awareness of someone might not merely be whimsy. It might be a sacred echo urging you to explore companionship rooted in faith and love. Now, let's not hastily jump to conclusions, for not every thought is a divine message. However, when it's about someone who shares your values, faith, and vision for a life bound in holy matrimony, these recurring thoughts might be worth paying attention to. The beautiful narrative of Adam and Eve's divine companionship sheds light on this spiritual phenomenon. Upon the creation of Eve, Adam's soul recognized its companion, and he exclaimed, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Genesis 2, 23 His heart resonated with the divine orchestration, and his thoughts mirrored this sacred recognition. It's essential, though, to approach this with a heart of discernment and prayer, seeking God's face fervently, asking for clarity and guidance. The Bible instructs us to trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 5-6 Surround yourself with a community of believers who will support and guide you. Engage in heartfelt conversations with the person who's been on your mind. Explore your shared beliefs and pray together, seeking God's will in your budding relationship. The journey of discovering God's plan for our relationships is a sacred adventure filled with hope, love, and divine surprises. So when thoughts of someone begin to tenderly knock at the doors of your heart, it may be a heavenly invitation to explore a union rooted in Christ's love. So tread this path with a prayerful heart, an open mind, and the spirit willing to embrace God's beautiful design for your life. Navigating the complex world of dating as a Christian can be challenging, especially when trying to discern if someone is truly God's choice for you. It's important to understand that God may not audibly confirm who your life partner should be. He does provide guidance through His Word and the principles it teaches. This guidance can help us identify if a relationship aligns with God's will for our lives. One key indicator to consider is communication. Just as a structural engineer cannot assess the durability of a building without examining its foundation, we cannot gauge the health of a relationship without looking at its communicative foundation. In the realm of lasting relationships, certain core principles are non-negotiable and effective communication is paramount among them. Think of a relationship as a building. If the foundation is weak, the structure will likely crumble. Similarly, a relationship without healthy communication is destined to face challenges. Communication issues can manifest in various ways. For instance, a relationship where conversations are forced or filled with awkward silences indicates a lack of connection. Proverbs 15.4 reminds us that the soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. This verse highlights the importance of nurturing and life-giving communication in a relationship. Moreover, 
Relationships where discussions frequently lead to arguments or hurt feelings are red flags. This type of communication doesn't foster the mutual respect and love that Ephesians 4.15 speaks of when it urges us to speak the truth in love. A relationship should be a safe space where both individuals feel heard and valued, not a battlefield of words. Emotional fulfillment in conversations is crucial. While not every discussion with your significant other will be groundbreaking, there should be a general sense of connection and enjoyment when you converse. This aligns with 1 Corinthians 13, 4-7, which describes love as patient, kind, and not easily angered. When communication is consistently hurtful or unsatisfying, it's worth questioning whether this relationship reflects the love described in the scriptures. Examining how you communicate with your partner can provide significant insight into whether the relationship is God's choice for you. A relationship destined to last is built on a foundation of healthy, respectful, and nurturing communication, reflecting the principles of love and understanding as taught in the Bible. Two, it's vital to recognize when a partnership aligns with God's design and when it veers off course. This brings us to a crucial point the concept of complementing each other in a relationship, especially in the context of marriage, as outlined in the scriptures. Let's delve into what it truly means to complement each other in a Christian marriage. The Bible, in its wisdom, offers distinct guidance for husbands and wives. Consider Colossians 3, 18 and 19, where it says, Wives, submit to your husbands as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, Love your wives, and do not be harsh with them. This passage, at first glance, might seem like it's assigning rigid roles, but there's more to it. In a broader Christian context, as echoed in Ephesians 5.21, mutual submission is a cornerstone of all relationships among believers. Similarly, the call to love one another, as stated in Mark 12.31, is universal. So. Why these specific instructions for husbands and wives? The key lies in understanding the unique manifestation of these principles within a marital bond. A harmonious marriage under God's plan showcases a special kind of love and submission. It's not just about fulfilling duties, but about enriching each other's spiritual and emotional well-being. The love a husband shows his wife and the respect a wife shows her husband are reflections of God's love for His church. They're unique expressions that transcend the general love and respect Christians are called to show one another. This distinction is crucial. In a relationship where both parties are followers of Christ, there should be a natural synergy, a unique interplay of strengths and virtues that echoes God's design. A husband and wife, in their individual roles, should bring out the best in each other, uplifting and supporting one another in ways that are unique to their union. Therefore, if you find yourself in a relationship where this divine complementarity is missing, where the spiritual, emotional, and biblical roles feel forced or unnatural, it's a significant indicator. It might be a sign that this is not the partnership God has intended for you. The absence of this synergy doesn't just impact your relationship with each other, it affects your collective relationship with God. In a truly God-ordained union, there's a beautiful harmony that resonates. It's like a well-composed symphony where each instrument plays its part, not overshadowing, but enhancing the other, creating a melody pleasing to the Lord. So, if this harmony is missing, it's worth pausing and reflecting. Remember, God's plan for marriage is not just about finding a partner, but about finding the right partner with whom you can glorify Him in the most profound and harmonious way. 3. The Role of Temptation in a Relationship Picture this. A couple deeply in love, yet their relationship brings more temptation than peace. It's like trying to fill a leaking bucket no matter how much water you pour, it never fills up. This scenario reflects an essential biblical principle found in 1 Corinthians 7, 1-5. through 5. 
Scripture teaches us that marriage should reduce sexual temptation, not amplify it. It's a bond that's meant to nurture purity and spiritual growth. If your relationship feels like a constant battle against temptation, instead of a haven of mutual support and purity, it might be a sign to pause and reflect. It's like planting a tree in rocky soil and expecting it to flourish. Without the right foundation, growth is stunted. Struggling with temptation doesn't automatically disqualify a relationship. It's about how you both respond to these challenges. If there's genuine repentance and a collective effort to align with God's will, there's hope. Remember, it's not just about avoiding sin. It's about pursuing holiness together. Now, think about the modern view of finding the one. It's often portrayed like a cosmic lottery where God's role is to handpick the perfect match for us. This notion, though appealing, oversimplifies God's plan. It's not about God being a divine matchmaker, but about Him guiding us to love selflessly and faithfully. God's desire is for us to love beyond the compatibility charts. Even the most compatible couples face storms. What sustains a marriage isn't just compatibility but the commitment to love unconditionally, as Christ loves the church. This love isn't a passive feeling, it's an active choice. In this light, a relationship that seems less compatible, but is rich in mutual respect, understanding, and sacrificial love, can be more blessed than one that ticks all the boxes, but lacks true love. It's about choosing to love the person you are with, not obsessing over whether they are the best match. The key isn't just finding someone who matches your checklist, but to find someone with whom you can grow in Christ-like love. 4. It's essential to understand that the person God has chosen for you will align with His vision for your life. This vision isn't just about the roles you play or the ministries you're involved in. It's about something deeper, becoming more like Christ. As 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, we are to be transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory. This transformation is the true essence of a Christ-centered relationship. When considering a potential partner, it's crucial to look beyond surface-level attributes and delve into their spiritual journey. Ask yourself, does this person embody the discipline and commitment required to prioritize Christ above all else? This isn't just about their current actions, but also about their spiritual history and growth. Marriage is a doorway. Before entering, the sign reads, Whosoever will, symbolizing the freedom of choice in choosing a life partner. But once you step through, the sign on the other side reads, Predestined and foreordained from the foundation of the world. This signifies that God knew your choice all along, and now it becomes a lifelong covenant. In our guide, Vertical Marriage, a Godward preparation for life together, we outline several potential warning signs to consider before making this life-changing commitment. It's not always about stopping the relationship, but sometimes about taking time to ensure alignment in your spiritual paths. Remember, choosing a spouse isn't just about compatibility in the present. It's about committing to someone who will journey with you towards Christ-likeness for a lifetime. It's about finding someone who understands that the essence of marriage isn't just about personal fulfillment, but about spiritual growth and glorifying God together. So, as you consider whether the person you're with is God's choice for you, reflect on these aspects. And if you're finding value in this conversation, consider subscribing and liking this video. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below.